Yeah, so, um, okay, let's start yeah, with your question. I try to help, but uh, I'd like you to remember that it is only only my experience. Uh, it uh, yeah. can be very subjective as a person who like work only in one company, uh, in one field and so on. But uh, I talk with uh, a lot of people who also already worked as a data analyst and who like pursue this path to career in data analytics. So I think I could combine their experience and my experience too. Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's all right. Thank you. Um, so I would like to ask about um, some questions I had after I read your um, posts on uh, the platforms you provided. And that is um, you are listing some disadvantages of data analytics, which are repetitiveness of tasks and lack of standardizing working hours. And about the repetitiveness of the tasks um i mean like there is iteration in every field you work in uh when i worked as a customer representative uh we had the same lines all all again and again asking customers so i'd like to ask what is the repetitiveness in this area you work in working in uh -huh. Uh, okay, firstly, uh, this article about disadvantages, it's not entirely my article. It's like combination of uh, journalists ask a couple of uh, data analysts and they provide their answers and the journalists combine uh, their answers in one place in one place. So it's uh, I don't, it was not my disadvantages that I mentioned here, but about repetitiveness. Uh, it uh, depends on the company, but uh, and on the industry with uh, which product you work and so on. For example, in our case, we try to find this uh, very repetitive task and try to autom automate them. So, for example, I work with mobile applications. Uh, so, from time to time, when we launch new release, we have to like provide some uh, compa analysis, comparing versions. So, what we could do good. Uh, what we've done uh, good, what we've done bad, uh, comparing like uh, a new one version of uh, some apps or or uh, old one. Uh, and uh, previously it was like uh, very repetitive because we use Python, we have to like uh, go, uh, went to database to query a lot of data, to combine it and so on and so forth. But with the time we understood that uh, we spent a lot of time with this type of task uh, why could why we couldn't uh, try to automate them and with the help of our data engineers uh, we created some internal tools that help uh, like comparing these two versions and it's uh, uh, combined for example uh, previously I could uh, I spent uh, like five six hours on uh, on this uh, analysis of this task when I do it uh, manually. But uh, with the, this automatization stuff, we you I spent like one hour for it, so I could provide a couple of uh, tasks like this in, in one day. But previously, I work only one task a day with this kind. So we try to uh, find a way to automate this stuff. Of course, it's hard to do it uh, with the ad hoc analysis. You know what ad hoc mean? So, um, yes, I... yeah, so something that uh, like uh, some of stakeholders like marketers or uh, product manager ask you to find some answer on their question with the help of data, but it is like uh, uh, this person will use it only once and the next time it will be all the question and you, you can automate uh, them because you never know what the question will be, what the data, what the, what the data for, for their work they, they need. Yeah, so in this stuff at hoc it is like very hard or almost impossible to, to automate it but uh, if you see some repetitive stuff you you try to automate them also uh working with dashboards uh in power bi or tableau it's also a very good way to automate some repetitive tasks so if you create some dashboards very useful so that uh, cover some topic uh, of uh, data stuff uh product managers or like stakeholders in your team don't 
have to ask you uh, some question about data, they could uh, go to dashboards and uh, see some stuff there. So it, it depends. If you see as a pro, if I, if I see as a product analyst that I spent a lot of time with some task again and again, I try to find a way to to automate it, to do it uh, without uh, provide provide the answers without me. So I, of course I have to spend some time for it to solve this to to, to create some I don't know like. Uh, schedule query, automating uh, refreshing dashboards, and so on and so forth. But then it helps me. It uh, like reduce the time that I spent on this task again and again. Okay. So, uh, is it a good idea to ask about um, the optimization that the um, company has before applying for the job description for the for the job? Yeah, of course, it's uh, good to know what's uh, what how, how the process works, uh, what, what the dashboards, what's already in infrastructure company use, and so on. So if company said, oh, we don't have any database, we have only some uh, third-party internal tool where we can uh, like uh, download some CSV file, and there our analysts work with this CSV file. It uh, means that it's not so mature company. Maybe mm -hmm. there haven't uh, any data engineers and you have to combine your data analyst skills and some data engineering skills, which maybe you don't have for, for now and so on. So it's always good to know what what what's the processes uh, in connecting to data in this company to know. Sometimes company uh, hire uh, you as a first data analyst. And it's always the company, of course, try to uh, try to show it that it is like advantages. You will be the first data analyst. You will uh, choose whatever technical stack that you want. When you want Power BI or Tableau and so on and so forth. But in my view, if you just start in your career in data analytics, it is always uh, wiser to go to the company that already have at least one data analyst who more senior than you uh, because uh, in case of some problems you have to go to someone to ask a question to to ask for help uh, if uh, you will be the only one data analyst in this company you have to go to stack overflow or to chat gpt but not to your uh, more senior colleagues um yes um so actually there is um a question uh, in regarding this um, I do see a lot of job description where they say that um, they are searching for someone who knows, uh, I don't know, either Power BI or Tableau R or Python. So th what does that mean if they have um, so many options? Like, um, do they mean that they don't have a standardized tool or do they mean that... Um, we are very flexible and can choose anything we are comfortable with. So what to understand from this job? Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, it's uh, like two different topics. So firstly, dashboards. So the company wrote uh, Power BI or Tableau. But uh, in reality, company use only one tools. So at least, for example, it is like Power BI. But uh, this company understood that uh, if uh, there is a data analyst who maybe have some skills uh, in using Tableau, it is not so hard for him or for her mm -hmm. to like relearn uh, and use Power BI because like some uh, common principles are the same. So you have to download or connect some data. You then uh, like manipulate it and then uh, try to visualize it. Yeah, it's uh, different uh, like uh, tools, but uh, so, so some uh, principle are the same. Uh, okay, so but if this uh, if it will be like for example two candidates and uh, one of them know Power BI and one of them know Tableau and this company use Power BI, so the first candidate would be preferable more, more yeah 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 but if there are like uh, all uh, candidates know only tableau all they look all the same so it, it is like this so in, in this is like in uh, dashboards uh, stuff so company will use only one tool and uh, but they wanted to reach to uh, more 
to bigger audience uh, for applying and so on. But people who already have work experience with uh, these tools that company use uh, will have some preferences. But in case it is a uh, Python and R, it is um, so it's mostly uh, it is doesn't matter for company which uh, type in which uh, programming language you use as you work for example in my case uh, sometimes I work with Python uh, for providing some answers so to analyze some big uh, CSV files but uh, then uh, I have to still uh, like um, import it in the, my findings to some uh, other tool uh, why why this. Because no one uh, from the stakeholders, like product managers, game designers, and so on, they didn't have Jupyter Notebook. It's some tools that uh, like uh, only data analysts uh, in uh, use uh, Jupyter Notebook, Anaconda environment, and so on. So I could, uh, if I provide some, if I had some Jupyter Notebook, I could share it with uh, other people uh, in my team because they haven't it. So, for example, if it if its case is Google Sheets, so everyone has uh, uh, like. Uh, uh, permission to to watch uh, or edit uh, Google Sheets and so on. It is easier to to share between uh, people. But in case like uh, Power BI or R or Python, it is depends on you because uh, you can provide uh, receive some answers with different tools. So you can use Python, you can use R, you can use Google Sheets, you can use Excel. It depends maybe with Google Sheets and Excel. It depends on the uh, amount of data that you have. For example, if it's like 20,000 rows, it's not so big. You can uh, do provide some analysis in uh, Google Sheets. But if we talk about 1 million rows, it will be very hard to provide this analysis in, in Google Sheets and so on. So it's uh, my advice if uh, you choose between Python and R, never choose R. So always choose Python because there are a lot of uh, much bigger community, a lot of books uh, and so on and so forth. And in future, if you wanted to go further uh, from data analyst position to data scientist position, uh, almost all data scientist libraries written on Python. So it will be easier for you if you already know Python. Uh, to, to my view, I almost never a uh, data analyst who work with R. There are uh, some of them, but uh, not so many, and Python is uh, among them. Uh, Python is uh, the most popular among these uh, tools for, for data analysts. But in case, in case of someone who just started their career, uh, in my view, uh, Python is have to be not the priority. So your priority have to be first SQL, then it have to be some BI visualization tools like Power BI, Tableau, then it have to be some statistics, uh, understanding of product metrics, and only after this, it can be Python. Of course, with your seniority, when you have more uh, some uh, tasks that uh, provide maybe some machine learning stuff and so on, it um, you may use more Python. Or if you wanted to uh, like uh, automate some repetitive tests, so if you provide some analysis again and again, so you can write in script in Python, and then it helps you. But at the beginning of your career, it is, in my view, SQL, more valuable than Python. So about the SQL then, um, in the program I uh, enrolled, um, we have mostly uh, learned um, how to query the data, but uh, uh, we just did an intro to creating tables. So uh, how often does a data analyst have to actually create this table and um, um, maybe dictionaries and uh, stuff like what for do you use SQL yeah. most? Uh, it's about creating tables. It uh, depends on the structure of your data team. So, for example, in this, if, if, if in this company you have data engineers as your colleagues, uh, it will be more uh, their task to like uh, provide this infrastructure to uh, manage the table, the schedule queries, and so on and so forth. So, for uh, your work as a data analyst starts when uh, data are already in the table, 
are already like clean without any problems and so on. So it is more on data engineers' uh, sites. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, of course, uh, some company, maybe at least especially some startups, uh, they wanted to hire a person who combined these skills, like your data analyst and your data engineers at the same time. Uh, I had experience only working as a data analyst because data engineering is a different role and it requires also a lot of knowledge, especially in Python, working with Python. And, and so on, but not Python that uh, data analysts use, not like Pandas, NumPy, and so on. Much, much for, for me, it's much advanced Python than uh, it's uh, for, for, for data analytics. Yeah, so I'm not using Python for creating tables or dropping tables. Uh, only mm, it depends also of the uh, database that you use. For example, I work with uh, Google uh, BigQuery, and it is like a very uh, a lot of some uh, additional features, a lot of some graphical interface. So to create, so if I query some table and I wanted to save it, I don't have to write query to cre for creating table and so on. I can do it with a graphical user interface, like uh, click the buttons that I wanted to save for this uh, uh, table, uh, write down where I wanted to save it, and then click to for, for saving it. And so on. So it's it's different on the type of database that you will use, and uh, there are like impossible for me to uh, like be prepared for all type of database or data warehouse that you you can use in in future. For example, in case of dashboards, it, it BI visualization, it is easy to prepare because like uh, there are like two popular uh, tools like Power BI and Tableau. So in my view, you have to learn both of them. But in case of database, there are a lot of them, and it is uh, like very hard to prepare for for all of them and so on. And it's not really a data analyst job, actually. Uh, like yeah, yeah. For for for, create, for creating for this uh, infrastructure yeah. environment, yeah, yeah, like this. Yeah, but still, uh, in my view, I think more and more that uh, company use uh, Google BigQuery. So it is like provide free accounts. So for example, I pro even on uh, some mock technical interview, I use it. So maybe you can at least uh, look how it look like. You can download for one free account and free version. You can download some CSV file, try to work with SQL there and so on. It's actually my first time hearing about the uh -huh. Google BigQuery. Yeah, I didn't know they have like this user friendly Interface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's they very good uh, with it. It is very comfortable to to work with this tool, and uh, sometimes yeah, you you can just uh, like use graphic user interface without additional uh, writing coding and so on. Okay. And but uh, mostly, I... mostly as we talk about SQL, so data analysts uh, have some tables. Uh, different tables that are uh, responsible for different part of some products. And uh, as you're already familiar with these tables, you know in what table which data you save and so on. So data analysts use uh, SQL for querying, for retrieving some data that uh, for now he or she can use in their analysis. Yeah. So it's it's mostly with SQL the most uh, hard uh, part, especially for me, is try to translate from your stakeholders. For example, your product manager said to you that uh, like uh, we need uh, five most uh, popular countries uh, in our product uh, all for, from uh, December last month, uh, and you have to translate it uh, from this human language. To this language of SQL because Google like uh, okay you 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 could uh, I think for now uh, try to explain your table to ChatGPT and uh, try to explain your data your column and so on and then uh, ask this question and try to see it but it is uh, for me better to know exactly without ChatGPT what what's how you can write a database to answer this question from this human language to this uh, uh, technical language. And then when you analyze your data set, when you provide this, uh, answer this question, you have to translate from this table language 
to all also human to explain your stakeholders of what's it so you you work as a like a translator from human language to technical to to this coding language and then from coding language again to human yeah, and your team relies on you because, like, uh, nobody from except data team uh, have access to database. So your product uh, team rely on you on this analysis, on that all your findings will be correct. Because, like, we, in in developers' case, for example, there are quality assurance engineers who can check some product, who can find some bugs, uh, and so on. But in case of data analyst. It is like uh, your responsibility if you had some mistake and uh, then you didn't see it uh, and uh, provide uh, conclusions that was not uh, correct enough. Yeah, I think that's why it's so important, especially for the new beginners to uh, start a company uh, that already have some senior data analysts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's not uh, exactly uh, when uh, sometimes uh, like beginners ask me what what they should look in in some company uh, to apply or not. I always try to advise two stuff. First is technical stack, uh, what uh, technology you will use. Because if you apply to companies that only use Excel, uh, it will be hard for you. And you, for example, you will work there like two years, three years, and then you wanted to change company. And uh, some other company will use like SQL, Power BI, so, so all the more advanced technical stack. It will be hard to you for, for you. Uh, again, you, you will feel yourself as a beginner because, okay, you work with Excel previously, but you never work with SQL, you never work with Power BI. You have to also, again, prove to the companies that you real data analyst and so on, and not, not, not only someone who work with Excel. And second one is working with uh, data or so someone someone from data team. So you have to have some colleagues. It doesn't matter if this company like 1,000 people, but you will be the first data analyst. It's uh, not, not so good. My advice is it have to be at least one person. And better if it's uh, not one, but, but many. Because in my case, for example, if I had some problem, I could go to my team leader to ask her uh, so some difficulty question and so on. But if my team leader uh, is busy, I can go to my other colleagues who yeah. like have more senior expertise and who also can help me. So it is like advantages if you have a couple of colleagues to whom you can go to ask some question, to have some advice, or at least for, for review. Uh, sometimes I provide uh, also you it, so I uh, go to some of my colleagues and I explain my findings, and these colleagues may see someone uh, that I couldn't see previously because she or he looks at uh, my analysis uh, from fresh eyes. Because if I spend two days with this data, I already biased because I had some findings. I know maybe some more and so, so on and so forth. But if there's someone who look at this data, at these findings from their fresh eyes, it can be also helpful and insightful. Uh, that was actually one of my questions, like how willing are people to help? And um... Yeah, with this you have provided the answer to Yeah, it's, it, but it's uh, also, as I said, it's very subjective. So it depends on the team. Yeah, it depends on the people. It's It uh, can be that all people in every team are very helpful and so on. Maybe some company have uh, all the atmosphere. Maybe they like uh, some competi competition and so on and so forth. So mm -hmm. uh, in my view, I like... Uh, uh have this beautiful environment where people try to help me and, and so on but it may be not the case i hope it is the case that in in every company data analysts help each other uh but it's not uh, so, some rules that everyone do, do it well yes because it isn't actually any an environment where they have to uh, be competitive because you are ha you have the same goal and that's um, to help uh, answer questions for your company. So there isn't any ground ground to be competitive actually. Yeah, yeah, I think like this. 
so we talk about the job descriptions and uh, do you have main, maybe other, uh, you know, red flags to avoid when looking for a job? <laughs> to be honest, I never thought about it, but I think it's like this, this too, the main, uh, yeah, like first, yeah, first uh, technical stack and second to uh, more, more senior, at least one more senior colleague than you. And of course, uh, yeah, you can look uh, at some other stuff, uh, but uh, I will I will re read some review, maybe even uh, to go to some of so someone who previously worked at this company, if you can find them on LinkedIn and so on to ask, but it is like more, some more, more advanced level and so on. And then also, I, I try to, if I never heard of some company, I try to provide some little research with the Google and to to try to see what what uh, how this company appear in news maybe we can, in ukraine we have uh, one uh, site where uh, we have review from uh, yeah, previous employers and so on from some company and it's always interesting to to see to look of course it is biased because if person have negative experience it's uh, he could uh, provide some review but if some someone have positive experience it is rarely that he will go to some site and write a review about this company yeah. and so on. So it is always a more uh, ne negative review. It is always uh, bigger than, than positive, but at least you can read and write them. Oh, uh, I do know some uh, websites that have the uh -huh. same uh, approach. Like you can read comments and uh, see even the stars and what the company offers. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah, it's different. Sometimes there is a company, I don't know how, like, in your country, but there is a company, especially in uh, finance tech, uh, especially in blockchain uh, industry, that uh, it is, uh, like, requirement uh, to, to go to polygraph. Uh, you know what it's like when you, uh, some uh, device, uh, when you ta uh, ask something and you say it, and this device can say, it, is it true or, or, or wrong that you, you say it? So there is uh, some stuff, but it's more connected to, to finance sphere and so on. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's go. Let's go further. But uh, can you tell me again? I will Google it later. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I don't remember how to translate it in English correctly because I never use this this words uh, in English. Okay, well, I, I will send it to you. Okay, you can write then me later. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me check the questions. Oh, right. So, um, let me ask um, if the current job aligns uh -huh. with your initial expectation of the data analyst field. Like, what did you have some um, expectation and reality uh, scenario when? You'd expected something, and uh -huh. you started working as a data analyst, and the reality was something else. Did you have something like this? Yeah, to be honest, it is even better than my expectation because I, uh, yeah, when I applied, I wanted to start my career as a data analyst. So I uh, understood that there is some data, I can analyze them, I can provide some insights, I can visualize them, and then uh, say to, to business that, oh, you can do like this or like that, and so on. Uh, my first first offer that I received, it was from finance tech, so it was first offer, it was from finance industry, and uh, there was like Excel, like the, the, the main tools, and I thought, okay, uh, like I, I spent uh, by self-education like almost uh, two and a half months. And I thought, okay, I could receive some offer. It is like, I prove this, but maybe I will not apply for my first job. Maybe I will try to, to, to find so, something else because uh, firstly, yeah, it is financial tech. It's not so very sexy industry for me, yeah. And uh, second one, it is like technical stack was not so good. Uh, and even at the same time, without experience, I understood that Excel is not uh, like so, some, some technical tools that, that I dream of. And the third one, uh, the third offer was from uh, the company where I work now, uh, Bitty Games. 
so uh, I am very fan. I'm fan of Duolingo, and I find some similarities as it is like also education. For, we work with education for preschool children. Uh, so it is education. It is like connecting art and technical stuff and so on and so forth. So I apply on it. And uh, I start working, I work as a marketing analyst. And then, uh, like, after a couple of months, uh, I switch to product analytics. And to be honest, when I apply, I even never thought, never read of uh, product, especially of product analytics. And it's a sphere that I like a lot. Uh, because like uh, you use some uh, data within in product to develop this product to create it to develop it to for, for it to become better and so on and so forth. So to be honest, my uh, like path, my dream was that I started as a data analyst and then I will learn machine learning and I go to data scientist sphere. Maybe within even the, in this company, but uh, on data scientist sphere. But uh, then when I start working with data analytics, when I try to uh, dig deeper uh, in this sphere, I stay for, in it like for one and a half year. I already like I already try to learn machine learning stuff. Yeah, but it's only I only start to 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 learn it uh, for, 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 for maybe for some of my uh, future working task and so on. Uh, but to, because uh, I spent a lot of time with product analytics uh, for learning it uh, on the, in the evening, or on, on my work, and so on and so forth. So to be honest, it is like uh, all stuff that it is became better because I thought as a data analyst that someone who work with the tables who provide some graph and so on. But uh, working with the tables in product analytics, it is only half or part of jobs. Because uh, like uh, working with uh, tables, with query, with Python, and so on, it uh, can help you to say uh, what happened. For example, like uh, our conversion uh, is uh, drop dro dro drop down, but uh, the other part and the main part for analysts is to explain why it is happened. And it is the most complicated, and it is the more always the most hard for me to find the answer because your stakeholder, okay, he or she or or them, uh, will be glad to 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 know what happened. But uh, it is like only part of question. You have to provide the answer why it is happened. You even uh, maybe have some hypothesis, and you have to prove or disprove this hypothesis, and so on and so forth. And it is like the better you can explain why this happens. With some of your data, uh, the better data analyst you will be, in my view. And it is a challenge that I uh, work in for, for for now every day because it is very quickly for me uh, with uh, these skills to 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 understand uh, what happens or to see where where, for example, if we talk about conversion, where our conversion decline, where it is increased, and so on. But explain why it has happened. Uh, it is like the, the, the most complicated, and you have to know exactly where good your product. You have to uh, think how your customer can uh, well, uh, can use your product. What action he can he he done previously, and so forth. So, so it's like some kind of detective. So you 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 feel yourself as a, I don't know Sherlock Holmes. And you try to, okay, maybe it is because of that. Can you prove that? Can you prove that? And you try to generate some hypotheses and you try to prove some of them, try to disprove some of them. And then, like, uh, when you present your findings to the to your team, when your team asks you why this happened, you can provide uh, this happened because of that, that, and that. And we can change that to avoid, for example, this decreasing of conversion, or we can uh, repeat that in our other products, then we could uh, like uh, duplicate this uh, growing of conversion and so on. I think that's something you uh, learn to do the more you are in the industry. Yeah, because... yeah. the more you work with the product, it is like a domain knowledge very helpful. Yes. Because yes. the more you work with one domain, uh, the better you understand this domain. Of course, if I will work with some med tech, uh, I learn some medicine, so 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 on. I will like understood better how their uh, so some medical product works and so on. I like game industry 
uh, and I don't want to change it. Uh, so I try to gain more uh, game dev knowledge uh, to, to be better analyst uh, connected to mobile games. So I think you um, mentioned that it's better to stick to a field, but not um, trying several. Like, uh, it's not a good practice to change domains. Like, if you uh, start mm -hmm. in in tech, maybe, our, or with medicine, uh, that is better if you stick to that path from start to mm -hmm. eternal. Uh, yeah, it depends. Uh, so, for example, in my view, case, uh, I work with a mobile application. Uh, so, it is mobile games, but it is still application. So it is uh, much easier for me to change a sphere. I could change sphere, I just don't want to do it. So I could change game dev sphere, for example, uh, to go, I don't know, like uh, maybe fitness apps. It still be apps. It still will work with maybe some subscription, maybe some advertisement and so on. It's all stuff that I'm familiar with. So it will be very easy for me to, to switch to some company that already work with mobile application. It will be much harder for me to uh, switch to some companies that work, for example, with the e-commerce site, where they like not only application, but they have their website and they have like Google Analytics in the, there and so on and so forth. So because I didn't work previously with this kind of product. So it is like a kind of product that uh, in similarity is that most, most common than, than this. But still, if this uh, other company that uh, work with the same types of tools, so they work with uh, SQL, they work with uh, Power BI, they work with A-B testing, it will be also easy for me maybe to receive quickly receive some domain knowledge because when I apply on this position uh, with the game dev company, so I didn't have any domain knowledge. So I spent my free evening during my probation period to, to learn more about mobile game and so on. Because when I, uh, on one of the meetings, when I mentioned that, when my team leader uh, mentioned some uh, types of games, mobile games, uh, and I never heard of them. And it was like, wow, I have quickly to receive this knowledge because it will be strange to work in, in game dev industry and never heard of some of the most common types of mobile game and, and so on. Yeah. So it's, it's, it depends, but uh, I know a lot of people who change industry, but uh, still like work with the same kind of products. So it's uh, very easy for them to, to quickly uh, set some domain knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let me check if I have any other Maybe question. Maybe with domain knowledge, maybe it will may be your advantages. So for example, if you if you start in med medical tech, uh, so when other, uh, when you will want to change the company and you know some other med tech company, it will be your advantage among all the candidates who previously not working in this. So for example, if I will apply to some game dev company and all the person who already have two and a half year of working in data analytics, uh, but they work, for example, with uh, fitness apps. Uh, so I will have some advantages because I already work with games. I know more, more uh, than this person, how it works and I'm more familiar with domain knowledge. So it, it can be advantages. And of course, if you switch industry, you lose these advantages because you're, you're starting mm -hmm. from zero in this sphere, but you will like receive this uh, experience very soon. So yeah, there, there are a lot of things to take into account, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And just, just to look, uh, I didn't thought about game dev industry when I applied. But uh, when I work there like years, uh, years, I understood that it is like wonderful environment and it is like a lot of companies that created some wonderful products and so on. So I did, don't see myself anywhere except this industry in future. Yeah, but it can be changed. Uh, maybe with the time with the, maybe some VR, new VR sphere when some uh, like Apple Vision devices and so on will launch, uh, maybe it will become some beautiful new sphere and I would like to, to go there. 
yeah, I'm I'm glad you like your uh, job. Mm. You did. 